Hello everyone! Now I'm going to discuss what is anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is an acute, potentially life-threatening hypersensitivity reaction involving the release of mediators from mast cells, vasophils, and recruited inflammatory cells. Anaphylaxis is defined by a number of signs and symptoms alone or in combination which occur within minutes or up to few hours after exposure to a provoking agents. It can be mild, moderate, to severe. Most cases are mild but any anaphylaxis has the potential to become life-threatening. Anaphylaxis develops rapidly, usually reaching peak severity within 5 to 30 minutes and may rarely last for several days. The initial manifestations of anaphylaxis may be loss of consciousness. Patients often describe a sense of doom. In the instance, the symptoms and signs of anaphylaxis are isolated to one organ system. But since anaphylaxis is a systemic event, in the vast majority of subjects, two or more systems are involved. So these are the signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis in gastrointestinal, oral, respiratory, cutaneous, cardiovascular, ocular, and genital urinary. Se severe initial symptoms develop rapidly, reaching peak severity within 3 to 30 minutes. There may occasionally be a period of 1 to 8 hours before the development of a second reaction. Protected anaphylaxis may occur within symptoms persisting for days. That may occur within minutes but rarely has been reported to occur during days to weeks after the initial anaphylactic events. So now, I'm going to show you a short clip for the pathogenesis of anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is the immediate hypersensitivity to an allergen. Immediate hypersensitivity is when the reaction takes place within minutes or a maximum of a few hours after exposure. Some common irritants are peanuts, shellfish, and insect stings. The extreme effects of anaphylaxis are shown in the images to the left and will be discussed later in this presentation. This condition can be lethal if not treated immediately. In order to understand anaphylaxis, we need to recall immune response cells such as B cells and T cells. Also recall the different classes of antibodies and their structures as well as their ability to signal for the release of inflammatory agents such as histamine. If need be, review the major anatomical structures of the respiratory system to have a better understanding of anaphylaxis. Exposed to an allergen, the body is going to produce IgE antibodies. The next time the individual is exposed to the allergen, the allergen crosses with the IgE antibodies and causes degranulation of the mast cell or basophil. This signals an allergic response. In the graphic on the bottom of the screen, you can see on the left that there is not a trigger for an allergic response as the cell simply becomes sensitized to an allergen. Whereas on the right, the cell is not only recognizing the allergen, but when it binds to the antibody, it triggers an allergic response and the release of, inflam of an inflammatory stimulus. Antigen presenting cells recognize foreign materials such as allergens. These cells then engulf these allergens and then it is processed by the cell and presented on the exterior. The presentation of these allergens to the helper T cells is the next step and what can either lead to a learned behavior for immune cells or the stimulus can go to trigger an immune response. Examples of antigen presenting cells are macrophages, dendritic cells, and B lymphocytes. Once an allergen is presented to the helper T cells, it can trigger two different responses depending on if it's the primary or secondary exposure. In the first exposure, it will trigger memory T cells, which speed up the immune response in future reactions and subsequent exposures to the specific allergen. In the secondary response, memory T cells are also produced. However, an allergic response is triggered when previously created memory T cells recognize the foreign allergen. At this point, the T cells signal for activation of other leukocytes. One of the leukocytes activated by helper T cells in an anaphylactic reaction are B cells. B cells are an antigen-specific cell that takes in the allergen and signals for the creation of IgE antibodies. IgEs are created by plasma cells and are the key antibody in anaphylaxis. 
The image on the bottom left shows the B cell's surface with antigens that are specific to a certain class of antibodies. IgE antibodies signaled by B cells are then released into the bloodstream. Once in the blood, they attach to various cells containing inflammatory agents. At this site is where the antigens attach to these antibodies and trigger the immediate hypersensitivity response known as anaphylaxis. The two types of cells that IgA antibodies affix themselves to are mast cells and basophils. Each of these cells contain granules of histamine. The significant difference between these two types of cells is their location. Mast cells are commonly found in and around tissues, where basophils are found in the blood vessels and circulatory system. An immediate hypersensitivity response is initiated when a sensitized IgE antibody binds to an allergen. When this binding occurs, more IgE antibodies are produced, which attach to mast cells and basophils. This action signals the degranulation or release of histamine in these cells. The degranulation of histamine, a potent vasodilator, produces the anaphylactic reaction. The chemical properties of histamine cause swelling of the respiratory tissues, which constricts the airway. Other manifestations include redness of skin, rash, and hives. These conditions need to be treated as quickly as possible with epinephrine, commonly administered through the use of an EpiPen. Classification The term anaphylaxis is often reserved to describe immunological reactions. A second term, non-allergic anaphylaxis, describes clinically identical reactions that are not immunologically mediated. The clinical diagnosis and management are, however, identical. For diagnostic and laboratory procedure, your doctor will ask you questions about previous allergic reactions, including whether you have reacted to particular foods, medications, latex, insect scenes, to help confirm diagnosis, you might be given a blood test to measure the amount of a certain enzymes that can be elevated up to 3 hours after anaphylaxis. You might be tested for allergies with skin tests or blood tests to help determine your trigger. Many conditions have signs and symptoms similar to those of anaphylaxis. Your doctor will want to rule out other conditions. For treatment modalities, the best way to manage your conditions are avoid allergens to trigger your allergic reactions, then prepare for an emergency. If you are at risk of anaphylaxis, carry epinephrine auto-injectors. They contain a prescribed single dose of medication that is injected into the thigh during an anaphylactic emergency. Be sure to talk to your healthcare provider about how to use the epinephrine auto-injector. It is important for you, family members, and up to in-class contact with you or your child to know how to use this epinephrine auto-injector. Then for medical management, during an uh, anaphylactic attack, you might receive cardiopulmonary resuscitation if you stop breathing or your heart stops beating. You might also be given medications including epinephrine to reduce your body's allergic response, oxygen to help you breathe, intravenous antihistamines and cortisone to reduce inflammations of your airway passages and improve breathing, a beta agonist to relieve breathing symptoms. The first nursing diagnosis for anaphylaxis is ineffective breathing pattern related to bronchospasm as evidenced by chest tightness. The first nursing intervention for this is assess the respiratory rate, weight depth, and depth and note for changes. Histamine is the primary mediator of anaphylactic shock. It causes smooth muscle contractions in the bronchi as a result of the stimulation of histamine receptors. As the anaphylactic reaction progresses, the client develops dyspnea, wheezing, and increased pulmonary secretions. Vascular to interstitial fluid shifts to contribute to respiratory distress through swelling in the upper airways. Second, observe for changes in color of the skin, tongue, and mucosa. Bluish discoloration of these body parts is considered a medical emergency. Third one is monitor oxygen saturation and arterial blood gases. Pulse oximetry is used to monitor oxygen saturation. 
it should be kept at least 90% or higher. As shock progresses, aerobic metabolism stops and lactic acidosis occurs, resulting in the increased level of carbon dioxide and decreasing pH. The second nursing diagnosis is decreased cardiac output related to generalized vasodilation as evidenced by DCNS. For the first nursing consideration is assess the client's heart rate and blood pressure including peripheral process. Several hypovolemia and hypotension results from the intense vasodilation. Those cells are weak with decreased stroke volume and cardiac output. Then place the client with the head of the bed flat with the trunk horizontal and the lower extremities elevated 20 to 30 degrees with the knee straight. This position promotes optimal venous return. Then monitor the client's urine output. The renal system compensates for low blood pressure by retaining water. Oliguria is a classic sign of an adequate renal perfusion. Then the third nursing diagnosis is deficient knowledge related to misinterpretation of information as evidenced by inaccurate follow through of instructions. For nursing intervention, assess the client's knowledge of the conditions and exposure to allergens. Present knowledge of the client who provide a baseline for initiate treatment, then explain factors that may increase the risk of anaphylaxis. Information allows the client to take control and make needed lifestyle modification. For example, if the trigger is fallen, the client will need to shower, change, and wash clothes after they spend time outdoors. Then instruct the client or family members about the factors that can precipitate a recurrence of shock and ways to prevent or avoid these precipitating factors. The client is at high risk for developing anaphylactic shock in the future if exposed to the same antigenic substance and needs self-help information to prevent anaphylactic shock. With prognosis, with prompt appropriate treatment, most patients who have had a severe allergic reaction can recover completely. Unfortunately, even with treatment, some people die from anaphylaxis. A person who has had anaphylaxis is at risk of future severe reactions if he or she is exposed again to sun. The same, the same allergens.